So in this video, we're going to learn uh, China's one-child policies. And so first of all, I want to introduce myself. And so I born in China. I spent my first 22 years in China and I'm the only child in the family. And so first, I want to have a couple of warm-up questions for you guys. So if someone said you should only have one child, what would you respond? I'm sure you could say it's not your business, right? If the U.S. government said for each household you only allow to have one child, if not allow the regulation, you will lose your job and face a huge financial punishment. Whatever you do, so you might say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna my, I'm gonna leave America and go to Canada." So, however, those are not the the answer the people in China will choose back to um, thirty or uh, thirty years ago, and so people literally were asked, "You only can have one child." So learning this, uh, learning for this part, and we will be able to understand why the government had to pass the one-child policy. So what is a one-child policy, and what is the economic impact of the one-child policy, and what is the social impact of the one-child policy, and what is the leftover women, which is related to the one-child policy, and is the one-child policy still implemented in China now, and what will look like without one-child policy. So after watching this video, we'll be able to answer all those these puzzles. So first. Why the government passed this one-child policy? So it has to go back to decades ago. So in 1939 to 1945, so China had a, was part of the World War II, fighting with the Japan. So the picture on the left you can see is very uncomfortable. Yes. So those are the dead bodies, and they are all Chinese. So during the World War II, uh, when China and Japan were fight, and China was attacked, and the Chairman Mao during that period of time, in uh, uh, directed the war and win the war, and so he believed that um, the human capital is very important, and especially he's worried about World War Three, and so uh, in order to win the World War Three, we have to have enough. Uh, human beings uh, or human capital. So actually, at one point, and the Chairman Mao is very encouraging people at every household to have as many people as any child as you can. And so, which means before one child policy, we have uh, child policy is to encourage to have more child children. In 1958 to 1961, there was a natural disaster hit China. China has the experienced one of the famous famine in the human history, so it almost it killed about twenty to forty three million Chinese. So the picture on the right, you can see people are suffering, and they don't have enough food, so obviously malnutrition, and the kids are born and died. So experience World War Two and famine, and the, the Chairman Mao actually encouraging the family to have as many children as possible, because Mao's believed that the population growth empowered the country and preventing an emergency of the family planning program earlier in China's development. So if I were Chairman Mao, I would see the same thing, and because if you learn the macroeconomic. Uh, theory and human capital is one of the big force to push economy going forward. However, the one thing that he didn't realize that is that there is a not uh, uh, there is a marginal diminishing effect of having too many populations. So that's what the government feel. So the population grew from around 540 million in 1949 to 940 million in 1976. So the huge increase is because no, obviously it's not because Chairman Mao's fault, but actually because uh, one of the reasons is birth rate definitely, but also the infant mortality decrease because um, there was no World War Three, and also there was no another uh, famine happened again. So and also the development of technology and people uh, and a better climate, and people are able to feed the kids and offer better Medicare, and the kids can have a better surviving rates. And also, people live a much better life, and so the life expectancy dramatically increased from around 35 years in 1948 to 66 years in 1976. So people can live longer, and more people uh, have given birth to children, kids, and kids that will not die, or a baby or infant will not die instantly. So all of those factors contribute to the dramatic increase of the population in China. So you can see we have limited land, limited technology. If the population keep growing uh, uh, rapidly, so what happens is human beings will use up the 
uh, resource, so that will affect economy. So beginning in 1970, and the government have a very mild uh, regulation in terms of the, uh, the how many children each household can have. So the citizens were encouraged to marry at a later age and only have only two children. So what this means is that uh, sometimes people misunderstood that uh, they thought a one-child policy just passing one day, and uh, there is no um, transition period. So the action that's not right because at the beginning of 1970, and the government already feel the urge, or urgent, um, or the urge from having too many uh, uh, have. A, a fast population growth rate, so that's why they're pushing the marriage age, marriage age later, and also trying to limit the amount of children each household can has. So now the question is, uh, why? As I said, uh, um, what we can see is that it is a lesson for us to learn, and people didn't forecast, didn't realize that there is. Um, the, the history can be repeat, but may not be repeated. We have to analyze it pretty well. So when the government starts to think about one-child policy, so actually has to mention the book called The Blueprint for Survivals. So in this book, they talk about the ideal population of China. They said the ideal population of China was 700 million, and that the universal one-child policy for all would be required to meet that goal. So which means, the path of the one-child policy is trying to meet the ideal population situation in China. So moreover, if fertility rates remain constant at three births per, per, per woman, China's population would surpass 3 billion by 2060 and 4 billion by 2080. So the good part for this uh, a blueprint for survival is it's totally different from Chairman Mao's era that the people only think about current. Actually, people start to forecast what's going to happen. So which means uh, when we talk about the negative, we will we will talk about negative impact on child policy. But here I want to emphasize is people did learn the lesson from the history, so they understand that they want to do uh, better forecasting. So the one child, the passing of the one child policy is not. Somebody just have a dream and they decide to do it. Instead, people did a uh, little bit of study and they tried to avoid huge increase of population, which gonna hurting the uh, the quality of the life. So they actually passed this law. So now, when the when is the date the government officially passed the one child policy? So that is the 1980 September 18th. So September 18, 1980, one child policy was formally implemented as the temporary measure. And so this is an important day as remember. So I born after 1980, so that's why I was infected. So I'm the only child in my family. So what is a one child policy? So one child policy is not saying every household only can have one child. So actually there are a bunch of exemptions. So the official policy grant local of official the flexibility to make uh, exceptions and allow second children in the case of first, the father was a disabled serviceman. So why? And uh, we will discuss this part later about which is related to the social security system. China doesn't have a good social security system, and when government passes one child policy, they also have the agreement with uh, every citizen that is um, they will uh, try their best to make sure the children will the child the only child in the family will take care of the kids. So why the father was a disabled serviceman will allow to have the second kids? Think about if both couple are healthy. If they only have one kid, and so the uh, you will have three uh, good uh, people to support the household. So if the father a disabled serviceman, so they sacrifice their life to support the development of the country. So they deserve to have another uh, labor uh, to supporting the family. So that's why they're allowed to have second kid. And the second scenario you will be able to have second kids is in most area of family were allowed to apply to have the second child if their firstborn was a daughter. I understand when you see this exemption you will feel why the daughter? Why not the son? So this actually indicating the the gender preference in China. So people are prefer boy than girls. And again, we don't blame on them. Back to the old time and the main uh, industry is agriculture. So usually physically daughter is weaker than boys. So obviously the boy are be able to do a better job 
quote unquote better job uh, to uh, take care of the field and had a better physical to support in the family. And at the same time, then in China, the once the daughter married to the man, the child will carry uh, the father's side's family name, which means the father's family will be able to um, keep uh, uh, going on. So that's why uh, the government understand the preference of the of the uh, citizen. And also they are encouraging to have that kind of thought is the daughter is worse than a boy or the boy is better than the girl. So that's why they said if you have your first kiss is a girl, you're allowed to have a boy or to have the second kiss. So you're going to ask me how about the second kiss is still a girl. And then then that your bad luck. You're only you're gonna keep your two girls. You will not be able to have the third. And the third exep exception is family with the children with a disability have different policies. And a family whose first child suffer from physical disability, mental illness, or intellectual disability were allowed to have more children. As I had mentioned before, and there is agreement between citizen and uh, and the government that is. Uh, the government will try their best to allow their, uh, to force their kids to take care of their parents. So if you do have a one kid and then they have the disability, obviously when the parents are getting old, this kid will not be able to take care of their parents. So that's why they created these exemptions. So they will allow the parents to have a healthy kids so that when the parents are getting old, the kids will be able to take care of the parents. And the fourth exemption is that children born overseas country were not counted under the policy if they did not obtain Chinese citizenship. So this is a very interesting exemptions. And also this is related to American. So if you read the news, so in California, there were a lot of Chinese people came to America and just try to have the kids. And so many people are blaming on them why they are doing that. So they are not really just trying purposely try to get an American citizenship. Uh, one of the reasons is because there's one child policy. So when you are want to have more kids, and so if your family can afford you to send a wife to America to have a kids, then they will do it because they will allow the family to have more than one kids. As I said, if you have choice, most family will choose to have at least two children so that they will not grow up lonely. And so this is a weird situation. The exemption is if the child children born in overseas country, they were not affected by one child policy. And the, the fifth exemption is the Chinese system returning from the abroad were allowed to have a second child. So as I said, when we are really looking at the detail about one child policy, it is not every house only can have a have one child, one child, but actually they have a bunch of exceptions. But the ultimate goal is control the population at the same time to allow the family to have somebody to care, take care of the parents when the parents getting old. So you must ask as a very beginning when I ask the Walmart question, and you understand that uh, uh, naturally people will not try to comply the rule. So how the government allowed to? Uh, how the government going to enforce this one child policy and how the government going to punish people who are not um, follow the policies. So that is enforcement and punishment. And so first, if you really try to challenge the law to have the second kiss, so you actually can end up to pay the social child raising fee or a kind of family planning fine. So usually you will pay your almost three year salary to support your kid to have the second kids and uh, besides that and uh, so you sometimes gonna sacrifice your job opportunities and uh, later we're gonna talk about the main company uh, the corporation the big corporation in China actually owned by the government so if you don't comply one child policy sometimes you're gonna lose your jobs so not only losing job you're gonna pay the fee so most of the family will decide oh I try to not to not follow the rules. So most of family follow the rule pretty well. And so at the same time, you're going to ask me, how about I have kids accidentally? So that's why government try to be very helpful. And so they actually will have the mandatory contract uh, contraception and the sterilization. So usually those mandatory uh, action will apply to female lady the wife instead of husband and again this also indicating the gender unbalance and the people are more respecting the male than the females 
So now, what are the impact of the one-child policy? So they definitely have a good impact. So in terms of good impact, so we did see the population didn't increase dramatically due to the one-child policy. So China still have it has the larger population. However, without one-child policy, I cannot imagine uh, how even we're gonna have even bigger population in China. And also, uh, since each family only can have one child, and also the parents rely on the kids to take care of them when they're getting old, so that's why I end up all the family uh, very um, uh, spell out very pay a lot of attention on the kids, and then they care about the education. They want to offer the kids the best living condition and the best education so that they have a bright future. And also, in when the parents getting old, the child can take care of the parents. So this is a good site. How about the negative impact? So there are a lot of negative impact. If you look at a picture on the right hand side, we call it four two one problems. So you can see there is a little boy, and if you look at pay attention, he is stressed out. He's very stressed out, freak out. So that is the one child. So look at the what's the problem with the one pro, one child policy created. So the goal is the when the child uh, when the when the parents are getting old, the par the kids will take care of the parents. However, they forgot they, the parents also have the parents. So what means that the this one child, which like me, and so we actually have a huge burden to to need to overcome. That is take care of the old the seniors, not just my parents, but also my grandparents. So think about I need to take out four when I get married. If I'm married to another only child. So two people together are going to take care of eight seniors and raise our own kids. So that is a lot of challenging. So when I talk to my friends, most of them are very stressed out. So they have a very, uh, even they have a good job, pay decent salary, but thinking about taking care of eight uh, seniors uh, and uh, not just eight, uh, 12 seniors and also their young little kids. They definitely, every day, they're very depressed. So that's one uh, problem the one child policy created. And another problem is the uh, bad social security system. And also uh, later, after watching this video, you definitely need to watch the link about the unrestored children and the government punishing those um, second kids by not giving them national certificate. So national ID, national ID, without national ID, the kids will not be able to go to college, go to school, even high school, middle school, and also they will not be able to get any Medicare. So that's really challenging. And also another issue associated with the one child policy, that's the disparity in sexual ratio at birth. If you try to pay attention on the American family adopting the Chinese kids, most of the kids adopted are females. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, People in China prefer boys. So since the China Chinese government only allowed to have one kid, so if by accident the parent had one kid and it's a female, usually some of the family would decide to abandon the kid, the female kids. So that's why they become orphan, orphan, and so orphan. That's why the Chinese pair uh, very kindly couples when they go to China, when they adopt kids, usually they are females. So if you think about the situation in China, so most of the kids left is male, and the less are female. So when they are getting to the age to think about trying to get married, so you end up more men than the females. And also the female are living a condition under a lot of social stress, and the female getting very tougher, and the boy are getting spoiled by their family, and they get weaker. And so the female nowadays are very so have a very better social status, uh, have better jobs than boys on average, and so uh, the that's creating the disparity in the sexual ratio at birth. And the most big severe problem is called a. Uh, leftover ladies so well how that happens so we you guys already learned that econ 220 supply and demand so let's use that a simple model to explain what's the why we are creating left leftover leftover women problems so which means the lady when they reach to 30 they can still get not get married so let's use the vertical line to label the value of the bride by money and the horizontal value is by the number of the potential bride that man can find. So if there is no one-child policy, when the young 
male and the female get into the age they are looking for the partners. So this will be the best scenario. So the demand and the supply will intercept at this point when the horizontal vertical value equal to zero. So what does that mean? So when the the boy and the middle girl, if they decide to get married, they based on the true loves. So no money involved. So what's the impact of the one child policy? So one child policy decreased the amount of the female in the domestic uh, in China. So that will shift in our supply curve, the potential bright supply to the left. So now if you pay attention, once you shift to the left, if still consider the zero money involved, you will be able to see this gap. So uh, at the zero value of the bright, so we have less supply, and more demand. So that means we will create a bright shortage. So a bright shortage. So then we let market run by themselves in order to close this gap. So then the price has to go up. So then initially, when the two couple marry, they only looking for the true love. Now, since we have a shortage of the bright, so when the two couple get married, not only they look at the true love, but also there is price involved. So in another way, so in order to for the boy to find a wife, so the 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 bright will uh, the girl will looking for not only the true love, but also looking for more socially successful and a wealthy man. So that's the problem for the leftover women is when we when the lady in China they they are first of all they already very successful than most of the boys and when they are trying to find a husband they're not only looking for true love but also looking for the careers successful men. However in reality is as I mentioned on average the boy was spoiled by the family. They are not as successful as the ladies. So then what happened is the lady cannot find them uh, can find true love, but they cannot find the man meet their um, uh, social status. So the lady decide to not get married. And once they over 27, the government create a term called leftover women. And also when they creating that uh, word is we consider it as a bad word, and they try to urging the lady to get married as well. So this is the leftover problem, which is associated with the one child policy as well. And so how about the one child policy now? And so is the one child policy still implementing in China now? Definitely no. So effective from January 2016, so the national birth planning policy became a universal two child policy that allow each couple to have two children. And uh, yeah, the recent, at the beginning of 2019, government even uh, reduce, increased the two-child policy to unlimited child policy. So which means you can have as many as you want. However, uh, without one child policy, without two-child policy, the couple decide not to have more than one. Most couples still decide not to have more than one is because the living cost in China is pretty high. So to raise the kids is really expensive, and so most of the family actually only choose to to have one. So what do we what did we learn from this whole um, whole one child policy uh, from uh, establishing to to abandon? So actually, we found over regulate by the government is may not be a good idea. So if we let the market run by themselves, they will actually naturally to adjust to meet the natural balance. Like we see here, even the government allowed the couple to have to have more children and then they still decide we only need one. And so which means the so the 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 racial the gender unbalance, the decreasing young generation, increase of senior generation this problem cannot be solved by changing the birth planning policies. So then what is the solution? So the solution is artificial intelligence. So that's the new trend in China. So the artificial intelligence is super developed in China from WeChat, everybody's using that now, to the, um, the, the, the the facial recognition and so by developing artificial intelligence it will help to supplement the human capital shortage in China problem and help take care of the seniors and helping to help to reduce the pressure on the, the young generations so that is the future so back to the question what would you like without one child policy as I said uh, it's 
the the pass the passing of the one child policy cannot be avoided because that's what people has to do during that period of the time. Uh, be, and we don't blame on Chairman Mao. We don't blame on uh, policy makers. That just the uh, he he um uh, his his story we had to uh, the the lesson we have to learn, and so planning well and give freedom to the human beings and let them to make their own decision over regulating may not be a good idea so that's the end of this lecture